Hi, welcome to WetPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon, I'm the editor of WetPixel, and we'd like to thank Exit404 very much for sponsoring this episode. Exit404 do a range of accessories for SLR and video cameras, and please check them out at Exit404, that's xit404.com. Um, I'm very happy to introduce our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, and the... Nash, sorry, the International um, Coral Reef um, Symposium. International Coral Reef Symposium, thank you, has just finished um, and it's a virtual event. Um, but it made us think about possibly one of the things that we often do take pictures of underwater is coral. And I thought I'd ask Alex how that he goes about taking pictures of coral reefs. Um, well, I think, uh, I mean, coral is a, is a fantastic subject to photograph. And I think a really important one, particularly because hard corals, although they may be not the most exciting animals underwater, yeah. are one of those species that is, you know, often referred to as the canary in the coal mine yeah. of climate change. It's a real, um, you know, species, and, and therefore there's a lot of interest in in photos of of it. And the photos we take now may also prove to be very valuable historical records in the future as maybe the reefs that we photograph sadly don't survive yeah. but if we don't you know make those nice photos now we won't have those records in the in, in the future yeah. um so I, I think taking pictures of corals is really important and i know you know photographers are often more excited by turtles and sharks and and lots of colorful fish but you know spending some time to record those coral shots is is really really important so i would i sort of my way you know coral is a quite a diverse group and they come in lots of shapes and sizes and colors and types. And there isn't a one size fits all photography approach. Yeah, yeah. And so I was going to sort of divide them up into a, a few a few types of, of coral shots and, and start with hard corals, the, the reef building corals, yeah. which are kind of what people classically think of when they say coral. Yeah. Um, and these are subjects that we can shoot both wide angle and macro. Yeah. Um, macro is probably the easiest place to start with them. Yeah. And I think the way that a lot of photographers enjoy photographing corals with macro is to create shots where the coral completely fills the frame and you have whether there's repeating patterns within the, you know, the rep repetition of polyps or interesting structures like the grooves of a brain coral. Yeah. Um, I think those sorts of patterns naturally are, are good photos to take and they are easy underwater photos to take, yeah. but that doesn't mean that they're easy to make them good. I think just because you can, you know, very easily take those shots, you need to get all the details right when a shot's easy to take. So when doing those coral detail shots, the key thing is to get everything in focus if you can. Yep. So try to keep the camera as parallel to the subject matter as you can and to choose a relatively small aperture so that you have you maximize your depth of field. Yep. Um, I actually, to go a bit geeky straight away, um, I actually use my curved port for those photos rather than a flat macro port because it has better corner performance, particularly with a like a 60 or a 50 mil lens on a full frame camera. Yep. Those lenses start to get a little bit naughty in the corners in terms of image quality. Whereas if you put them behind a, a small port with a curve in them, you get really, really good corner performance out of them. Yep. So if I'm planning to do those shots, and I have to say these aren't normally shots you go in the water to shoot, they're normally shots you do at the end of a dive or something, then I will use that lens. The other lens I like to do these coral detail shots with is actually the WACP zoomed into the, the, the 70 end. Yeah. And that's actually also a really nice angle for coral detail shots and, again, has brilliant corner performance. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, those, those are really good. Um, in terms of lighting, just, just quickly on that, there's, you can shoot this with very flat front lighting. Yeah. Um, but the two lighting techniques I typically use is um, the technique where we just go for a bit of extra texture by pulling the strobes a little bit wider, keeping them pointing forwards, but pulling them wider, then they angle in and create texture within the coral. Yep. Or if I want super really hard texture, I would just basically turn one flash gun off, put the other one out to the side and angle it in and have just one strobe coming across the coral to create texture um, and, and, you know, and variations on that. So the texture is important in hard coral shots. So text, I mean, texture, I think possibly just to elaborate on that a little bit, texture is created by generating shadows. And the only way you can generate shadows is by direct using directional light. I mean, that's ultimately what you're talking about, isn't it, Alex? It's basically yeah, yeah. Uh, and you creating can shadows. Create, yeah, create directional light either by moving flash guns or playing with flash gun powers if yep. you have two flash guns. 
Um, you know, because you have two flash guns on different powers, there will be a direction to that light. Um, so, and, and therefore create texture. Um, in wide angle, um, I think the key again when shooting hard corals is to create that texture because you want to reveal that lumpy, bumpy, um, yeah. spiky structure in them. Yeah. And the, the best lighting style for that is cross strobes where you put your strobes, you, you're close to the coral, but you put your strobes out wide and angle back into the coral. And yeah. that creates a lot of texture in, you know, by creating shadow in the coral. So you still get an evenly illuminated coral, but you reveal the texture in it. And you know, often when we we when I teach cross strobes on workshops, I always sort of say this is a hard coral technique. Yeah. Um, and then you know, generally with 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 the wide angle shots, you want to go spend time finding a really really pleasing colony. You yeah. know, this is you know, you want to look for the one that's made a really nice shape that's got really interesting grooves or bumps or, or, or textures in them. Yeah. Um, that sticks out from the reef in a nice way. And, yeah. and those can make really, really beautiful pictures. It's not just, oh, I'm doing coral photography. I can shoot whatever I like. And I think the other thing is that also consider how you're going to approach the actual coral um, outcrop itself or the particular coral. You know, n a lot of corals are, are amazing, but you you simply can't get at them. So so make yeah. sure you choose something that's safe, obviously, for the coral and for you to approach safely that you're not going to risk contact with it because it's incredibly vulnerable to damage. So. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's a very good point, especially with, um, you know, when using a cross strobes technique, which involves strobe arms dangling around the place. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, but I would say, you know, like a really good one to to start with is kind of a big, bouldery brain coral that sticks up. Yeah. Or uh, in in the Indo Pacific, a really nice coral to photograph is the um, Turbularia, the the yellow, very classic red sea coral. Yeah. You get those yellow sort of small bombies of, of swirling you know yeah. folds um you know one of many species that are kind of you know you often hear words like cabbage or lettuce coral used those are actually words used for a number of plate forming corals it's not a specific species it's just a that's a shape um yeah. and then you know you know all the sort of table corals and branching corals also work really well because they make nice shapes i think you can enliven those pictures with some unusual techniques such as doing long exposures with spins and zooms and things, if you want just to make the picture visually a little bit more intriguing for, for an audience that maybe have seen these things before. Mm. Um, but yeah, cross strobes, inward lighting, I think really both of those work well with these corals. Um, how, on how to soft, soft corals. Sorry. Soft corals, yeah, go on then. Yeah, I was going to move <laughs> on to soft corals now. Soft corals, they're all about colour. Yeah. And you really, you know, so you want to spend time looking for soft corals that have the strongest colour because yeah. you're, you're looking to wow people with those great colors. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't photograph some of the more, you know, the important browny, greeny, you know, dull yellowy ones, but generally we're gonna get the biggest impact from our audience by looking for big colonies that have made pleasing shapes that um, have got strong color. And because soft corals can inflate and deflate, we generally want to catch them at times when they are looking at their best, when they're yeah. properly inflated, Look, it looking really good. And that usually requires either sort of a bit of darkness or um, a bit of current. Yep. Um, and I have to say that trying to predict when soft corals will be, you know, at their best is very hard. It's more of a case of if you are diving when there is no current, chances are during the day, chances are you're probably not going to get them at their best. Yep. But, you know, every dive you can go around the corner and suddenly they're all looking amazing. Yeah. Um, because maybe the current is just hitting the reef there or for whatever reason they're, they're, they're looking good. But yeah, early morning, late in the day, when there's currents running, you've got a really good chance of having the coral soft corals looking at their best. And also sort of under overhangs, you know, in shadowy mm. areas where where the, the sun has passed over. Those are also good places to look. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing, I mean, they're I, they're I think... They're growing in those environments because yeah. they in, in areas where the sun shines, the hard corals outcompete them. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. The, um, the 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 other thing that I always think with with soft corals is soft corals are really backgrounds are really really important. So you know you want to make sure that the soft corals in a position where you can contrast it. Obviously this is typically in blue waters. So so you can get a really nice pleasing blue background. I think that's that's really important. That's what gives that that pop to that beautiful colours. Um, yeah. And, absolutely. And actually, and actually, I think I think sometimes you can get away with the less vibrant coloured soft corals on a beautiful background still look great. So um, mm. so it's as much about the background that you've got that you're shooting yeah. towards. 
Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you really want to either try and get the coral so you can find a camera angle so you can frame it against blue, mm. or you want to find an angle where you can frame it against a really black, dark, silhouetted bit of reef because yeah. both that strong blue or that strong black will make the colour really pop and make, make the image work for you. Yeah. I think, again, it's a case of finding the right corals, though, you know, in the right places. And it, I think that's a really important in both hard and soft coral wide angle is it's not just the case of, oh, that one looks nice. It's yep. you want to find a really good colony that's really making a nice shape at that time, either through growth or through inflation and is in a position that you can really make a nice photo of. Yep. And that's why it's not, you know, corals may be all over coral reefs, but getting those really special shots can actually be you know, really hard work trying to trying to find those pictures. And it's also why, you know, there you are on, on a classic kind of reef dive. And when you find a spot that's got great corals, stop and take pictures of it. You know, there's mm -hmm. a great temptation to go, well, it's coral. But if you've got somewhere where you've got all those factors all all lining up in a row, that's really worth spending some time with that as a subject. Um, you yeah. know, we, we often tend to kind of write, OK, we shot some coral, move on, but actually spend some time work exposures, work the lighting and get get really good images out because they're really worthwhile getting, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Um, then sort of the next sort of type of shot I would say is, is kind of the coral garden mm. type image where you have a large area of reef that mm. looks, you know, where you've just got corals. And particularly these are hard coral environments. They may have some sea fans or that sort of thing mixed in, but they're typically hard coral or and and, and or leather corally type environments. Yeah. You've got... Yeah. Um, Sarcophytons and 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 things mixed in with and areas mixed in with the hard corals, yeah. and um, I think those environments it's I think they they work very well with very wide lenses and it's very much more that panoramic view. You can shoot them as a panorama should you want to because not too much is moving, but it's more a case of um, trying to capture that grandeur of the scene. Mm. Um, so if you're going to do it with strobes, it's strobes out really wide, often on quite high power. So mm. you're trying to light up this large area. I think this is a great type of image to shoot with filter. Um, I think filter photography suits coral gardens really, really well because oh. it gives you this color penetration into the image and actually makes shooting the images really, really simple. Yep. Um, um, and I think the key is, is to capture that feeling of, of, of vista and scale. Yeah. Um, the things that we can bring into those shots to make them a little bit more interesting, um, you know, in terms of compositions are if they're in shallow water, work on the reflections. Yeah. If you have particularly calm weather, yeah. I really recommend going in without scuba gear on. Because even if you're at the surface, when you breathe out with scuba gear, your bubbles disturb the surface even a little bit. Yeah. And the really brilliant reflections come when you are completely still. Yeah. And I remember, you know, I often talk about this in workshops. So I remember years ago doing reflection shots in the Red Sea and um, an, another diver on the workshop, um, Alex Tattersall, actually, who many people know, um, he was about 20 meters away from me. Yeah. And him moving 20 meters away from me was disturbing my reflection. Yeah. And I was like, hey, stop moving. I'm trying to get a shot here. Um, you know, and it was a bit of fun. But it was amazing that, you know, you the the quality of my shot went up when I had those perfect conditions when absolutely everything was still suddenly the reflection really came and and the obviously the depth of the corals makes a really big difference here the yep. you know shallower generally the better but it depends on the type of shot you're after yeah, yeah. other things we can bring into those kind of shallow water vistas we can play around with snail's window which can make create really interesting images and of course we can also play around with split level photography as well with shallow coral gardens um, I do shoot a lot of splits of shallow coral gardens. However, I think that photographers can sometimes be too drawn to doing a split yep. and to force a split shot on a coral garden because the corals are shallow when there really isn't anything interesting above the water. Yep. So I'd always ask yourself, have I got something interesting? If you've got a you know, lovely tropical beach or mangrove trees or amazing clouds or a beautiful yep. sunset, yep. splits are brilliant for shallow corals. But if you haven't got one of those, you might be better with a reflection shot or a snail's window shot um, in, in those shallow water environments. Because, I mean, a lot of those types of shots are done very shallow. Um, I, I, it's a good opportunity as well for, for early morning, late evening um, shooting where you can get really nice light effects. You know, the so-called dappled light when you've got because you're up shallow, you get the light beams coming through. Again, mm -hmm. obviously, surface conditions are important for this as well.
but that's also another way of kind of lighting those shots up is to use the light coming through the water as well so not only like a split where you've obviously got the light above the water mm -hmm. in this case also have the light moving through the water as well which can produce some really nice effects it's just a it's just by definition they tend to be fairly shallow which is a good place to shoot it's up, it's up yeah absolutely and, and and i think you know those those effects you're talking about are also very beautiful and yeah. adding that additional beauty to your shot i think is really really good yeah. And then I think the only final thing I've got to say on corals is is capturing behavior. Yeah. And, you know, corals spend most of the time looking like rocks. But if you get your timing right, the, you know, most hard corals reproduce in big synchronized spawning events. Yeah. And it's not known exactly when they spawn everywhere in the world. But in many places, it is well known and well studied and totally predictable. And yeah. it's usually at night. But if you have the opportunity to dive with coral and sea corals spawn and sometimes it might you know it can be because of planning but the first time i saw it was i happened to be on holiday in the caribbean in the summer in i think it was 1992 um and that was the first time i saw coral spawning and i was there and they said oh we think the corals might spawn tonight who wants to come for a night dive and it was amazing to see them yeah. and so you can luck into it as well because you know they spawn yeah. in different places all, all you know around the world at different times of the year but yep. they in each place they are very highly synchronized so you you need yep. to know how to have someone who knows what they're doing to find them yep. and i think that is a fantastic part of the coral sport story yep. and spawning photos are something that very few photographers have so i think they're a really really nice shot to have and i know i very rarely give a talk about reefs or underwater photography without showing coral spawning shots so they're they're shots that become a really important part of your portfolio and that type of image i think is always worth chasing and and i think i mean i think that you know the the, the challenges of lighting something like a coral spawning event at night um using continuous lighting also really uh, um offers some amazing creative opportunities you know you you can do some really fun you've almost dead by definition got to do some really funky stuff so so you know it makes life really really fascinating i mean even mm -hmm. even shooting, I, i've seen people shooting macro of, of, of the actual the, the 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 spawning happening and that that again you know it, it's it's really beautiful and very unique so yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah when i used to do coral spawning dives quite a lot um and i haven't ruled out trying to go this year if you know if depending on travel restrictions um because it might be something that might be possible later in the summer and the end of the summer um what i i would those would for one of the few dives where i would take two cameras down and i would put those glow sticks on my cameras and i would leave them on the sand so i had a macro camera and a wide angle because the reality is there wasn't time during the spawning event to swim back up to a boat but because you were generally working in a small area you find a sand patch surrounded by corals and you just leave your camera behind you on the sand, go yeah. shoot some wide angles, put the yeah. camera down, grab the macro, shoot some macros yeah, because yeah. you know, you own, you, you know, you weren't going to get the chance to get those shots for another year. Yeah. So you, you know, it was a, it was a good dive to approach with two cameras. Yeah. 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 That's good advice. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Um, Alex has a huge variety of, and well, I, I, your corresponding image is very iconic, Alex, but you've got lots of coral images. Um, if mm. they go on to your website, and put coral in what will happen <laughs> <laughs> so my website is amustard.com and as, as, as regular viewers know it's got a search feature to be able to search lots of images yeah. i think the problem of searching coral is it's such a diverse group yeah, yeah. that you will pick up you know you know the soft corals we have in here in the uk all the way through to coral reefs right. i would say coral reef is probably a better search term right. but i think the problem is is that you will also then pick, you know, pick up pictures which are here's a fish on a coral reef type caption. Yeah. So I don't think it's an easy thing. If you want to see hard coral pictures, maybe search a search term like acropora. If yeah. you want to see soft corals, maybe search specifically soft coral. Yeah. Um, or yeah, hard coral or soft coral are probably better search terms actually. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I think that's probably a yeah, hard coral, soft coral. That, cool. that would work best. Good, good question, Adam. How do we think? About <laughs> yeah. How do we find the coral pictures on Alex's website? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, and um, thanks again to our sponsor, Exit 404. Um, we really appreciate your support. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to add any comments um, or suggestions in the comment section and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm -hmm.